Hello and uh, welcome to Cheshire Audio. Um, I get a lot of phone calls, a lot of phone calls, from people who sort of wanted to get back into listening to records. Um, it's interesting because I think listening, you know, the vinyl side of it never went away, right from, you know, all the sort of true enthusiasts, as I would call them, never went away from vinyl, it was always the main source. But with this sort of resurgence, um, it's coming back more into the mainstream. There's a lot of people out there who haven't sort of ventured into this world for a long, long time. And I think coming back into it is, is a bit, for some people, is a bit of an ordeal. I think there's, the internet doesn't help. I think there's an awful lot of misinformation. And it seems at the moment, if, if you want to just a simple, you know, get your going little setup, you can, you can buy these little record players. They've got built-in amplifier and speakers. Most of them are dreadful. Um, and then there's a big void where there's not really anything better than that until you get to full-scale separates and that's a complete minefield if you've been out of it for years or if it's something new to you it's a minefield it's you know it's not an easy thing to go into um if only there were a one a one box solution uh, from a from a single manufacturer that was a really good quality proper audiophile quality um you could play your records on and really get something out of it that was expandable if only what i'm going to be talking about today is the Riga System 1 and it comes like this in a big box now I'm not going to be opening that box because I've actually got all the component parts set up in the other room um, but yeah let's have a look it's um, really good actually it is really good okay so here we've got System 1 um, I mean, if, you've, if, you've, if you're new to this and you're, you're just sort of doing a search because you've heard about the System 1, um, just a, bit, a few things about Riga. Riga are a, a, a quite an old British record player manufacturer. Um, started out in about 73. Um, they were sort of known for the Riga, Riga Plane 2, Riga Plane 3, and that, that, that was sort of a mainstay for years in the sort of audiophile world. They were sort of the deck to go for, really, um, without spending stupid amounts of money and without whatever. So very, very, the, the whole ethos of Riga is keep it simple. Don't have any superfluous um, things in there. And it, let's just make the equipment sound as, as good as we can for the money. Uh, and that's what they stuck to. They, they haven't sort of swayed from that all, over all, all these years. I mean, some manufacturers have. A lot, of, a lot of manufacturers are going down the Bluetooth route and all these sort of other things now, trying to cram the features on. Riga don't do that. They, they, they stay very purist. Everything is just about sound quality and just about reliability as well. So. Uh, and I know not a lot of people realise that Riga does have a sort of lifetime warranty. It's, it's obviously if you jump on something, it's not under warranty, but sort of warranted against sort of failure from manufacturer. Um, so yeah, the components we've got the Planar One. I mean that's sort of won various awards. Very simple again. It's just purely take the lid off so you can see any better. Um, totally manual turntable, just on off, and then. The, manual turn on there's, there's no automatic mechanisms to lift and lower or anything like that just a little little manual lifter to lift it in position push it across drop it um she's all you want really there's nothing to go wrong um there's nothing sitting there vibrating affecting the sound there's nothing you're paying for in there that's superfluous so all the money's gone into making you know the motor better the turn on better and all these sort of things so that's why this is kind of a class leading deck I mean, the, there's other decks around this morning, but the, the Rig has kind of been the one for a long time now. Um, then we go into the Riga I.O. Think about the thing about the I.O. is it's because it hasn't got any of these sort of extra things. There's, there's other amplifiers that are similar money to this, but they don't perform anything like it. The, the competition for the I.O. If you wanted to have Bluetooth and you wanted to, because basically this is just all this is is a selector switch and a volume control. There's nothing else extra on there. There's no tone controls. Say no Bluetooth, no um, digital converter or anything like that. It's, it's a very purist line level amplifier with a, a decent record player input because the record player input is a different thing. You, that's something that not every amplifier has nowadays. Uh, totally purist. Um, to get that kind of sound quality from another brand that has all those things in it, you've got to sort of double the price, really, if, if, if not more, really. I've not really sort of side by side compared it with things but it's it's got a fit I sort of have a sort of gut feeling about this from doing this for so long that you probably would need to spend roughly sort of eight hundred to a thousand pounds with a foot on a fully specified amplifier to get that sort of sound quality 
Um, and then you've got the Riga Kayaks, which you talked about the other, recently in a, uh, did a sort of individual review of these. Interesting design, made of phenolic resin, not MDF like everything else, so sonically they benefit from that and it's a price thing as well, because if these were MDF, these would be a lot more expensive. Um, probably sonically not as good either, so there's, there's all that. Years ago, and this, this is the only thing which is a slight sort of thing, okay, about the, the system one. I've been sort of brought up in this sort of audiophile world where you don't tend to have one make system. It was always a bit frowned on. Uh, and I think the reason for that is pretty much most manufacturers tend to have something they're very good at. So, you know, say there's a manufacturer very good at record player, they probably wouldn't be that good at making doing electronics because this is an engineering thing. Uh, and also with speakers, it's a different thing. It's, um, you know, it's dead, you know, dead materials and making drive units work in the right space and all this sort of thing. They're all very different principles and there's very few manufacturers who are, 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 have any sort of full knowledge of the whole thing to be able to make it all work together. I and mean, even, I mean, I'll try and find the advert actually. I saw an advert recently which was a throwback from the 70s. Sony had done an advert um, with a picture of a car that was made up of a Rolls-Royce grille and uh, sort of a Morris 8 back end and wheels off a 2CV and then a door off a Mini and another door off a, off a Jaguar and all this sort of thing and it said if only if only people bought their hi-fi in, the in, the, in the same way that they bought a car meaning all from the same manufacturer don't mess about and I suppose their thought on that was please buy everything from Sony um, because the actual accepted way to do it was not to buy all the bits of equipment from the same manufacturer. I think actually the reason that this works as a system is that Riga is probably one of the few companies which are actually quite good at everything. There's nothing that they really haven't quite got a handle on. Um, obviously the turntables have been, you know, price for price have been the best around for years. I mean, there's obviously there's better turntables at high prices, but, there's, but within each model within its sort of price category is the, is pretty much the best there, best there is. The little I.O., like I already said, there's not really any competition for that. Um, it is limited in certain ways, and I'll talk about that in a sec, but um, generally, fantastic. And the speakers, I mean, probably with the system, if you wanted to cut the price down a little bit, I mean, as it is as this, the system, I think you say by buying them all as a system one instead of buying them separately, you save about eighty pounds, something like that. Um, if the price is still a little bit on the high side, the thing to do probably will be to buy the deck, the amplifier, and go to cheap to cheaper speakers because the speaker is the least important part of a system really. The deck is the most important part. Then, the, then there's probably the cartridge, the arm stylus, then the amplifier, then the, then the speakers. Um, I've actually done that combination with little fine audio F F three hundreds. I've done it with uh, monitor audio bronze fifties. I've done I can't think of any more, but yeah, I've done I've, I've done the same setup with with lesser speakers, and it works really well as well. Obviously, with these it's better, but if you want to, if you're really trying to cut it down, then that, that that's the way to that's the bit to compromise. Um, so yeah, overall, very clear, very punchy, very it gets, it gets a lot out of your older recordings. The, the P1 particularly is very good with um, perhaps recordings you didn't think were that good when you bought them years ago. Um, and partly it's because Riga decks have this ability to pull the sort of musicality, the, the, the rhythm, rhythm and the timing out of recording. And I think if you if you get that, you get more involved in the sound. You don't, your mind doesn't drift off to whether it's crackling or whether it's not that, you know, you, you don't listen to the tone, you start listening to the, you know, the guy's technique on a guitar or whatever. Sounds a bit pretentious, but that, I think once you click with that, you'll start to realise what I'm talking about. The amplifier is very similar in that respect, actually very, very clear, very sort of linear sort of response from it. Big transformer in it, considering it's only small and quite a big transformer, and that usually is an indication that it's got a lot of drive current. Um, the wattage isn't massively high in these, I don't know what it is, 40, 50 something. It's not that relevant really. But it, it does drive speakers very well. It doesn't need much volume. Like a lot, all the Riga amplifiers are like that. They don't need a lot of volume for them to kind of come on on song. Um, you know, some 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 amplifiers that are rated at a very very high wattage tend to need to be turned really high before they suddenly start to sound exciting and musical and, and enjoyable. Really. Uh, again, speakers which you can sit like this on a table probably wouldn't put them on the same as a record player because any resonance that comes through will come right back up through to the stylus. So try and keep these isolated if you can. 
Uh, there is a wall bracket that they do, that you, so you can, you can warm out. It doesn't come with a kit, but there is a wall bracket. Uh, but generally, if you can get, either get these onto stands or on a, on a separate surface, that would be better. Not the floor, I wouldn't do it. But you, need to be, you need the treble unit to be kind of ear high ish give or take, a few inches when, when you sat down. And that gives you the best sort of, best sort of balance. Um, so yeah, system system one. Oh, I was going to talk about the um, only slight drawback possibly with the I/O is that you've only got record player input and two other line inputs. I mean, for mo in most situations nowadays, that's all you need. I mean, years ago, people would have a record player, a CD player, a tune, or a tape deck, probably another tape deck. Um, so you were looking at five inputs is, was was kind of a standard then. Really, most people with this, I don't think it'd be a record player, possibly a CD, possibly a, um, a streamer. Um, and I've, I've sold a lot of these with record player and a Bluetooth receiver, which isn't brilliant. The Bluetooth receivers aren't a great way of doing things, but a lot of people just want... I think I've heard this story a few times now. I, I want to listen to my records, but my son will want to, use his phone, want to stream from his phone. Well, just how it works. It's a, it, you can buy a little iFi uh, Bluetooth receiver and just plug it in. Um, so if, you, if that's what you want, it's all there. But you're probably not going to need more than the extra two line inputs. I mean, that's that's for, for most people nowadays. That seems to cover it. Um, so yeah, that's system one. I'm really really impressed with it. I've, I've I've sort of played with it. Obviously played with these quite a bit. I've played with these on much bigger systems, and they just keep getting better and better and better. Whatever you do with them. But just the straight system one, it's, it is a bit of a bargain, really. Like I said, if you want to, if you want to sort of undercut the price a little bit, change the speakers. But I, I tend to go with it as is, and it means that if you do upgrade, if you say you've got a player two or a player three, which is you know you could easily go play two, play, player three, player six actually with this setup, still stay with the I/O and these speakers, and it would just keep getting better. Uh, it's one of those things. Proper specialist kit does just keep getting better. If you keep improving the source, then there's more and more potential to be realised. There's an awful lot of stuff out there that doesn't have that. There's a lot of it, particularly with things, like I say, if you've, if you've got amplifiers, they've got all these other features on as well, they tend to have an upper limit where they just don't get any better. You can put as, as good a source onto them as you want and they'll just never really get any better. Keeping it pure like this, yeah, you do. You, you, really, you can really move things forward by spending a bit of money at the front end. Uh, I know people, some people change the cartridge on here. I tend to say stick with it and then go, you know, upgrade the turntable later and you can change the cartridge, it's, I've done a video on that if you want to know how to do that but generally I'd say as is, you just do it like that. So yeah, that's the system one. Um, I don't think there's anything else to say really. I don't think there's anything else to say. But uh, if you want to have a listen, yeah, come in, um, give us a ring, come and have a listen to it. Uh, obviously you can mail order these, uh, it's one of the few things that really let you mail order because they like, they like you to look after your customers which is a really good thing actually. So a lot of their stuff you can't mail order it. You have to. The customer has to be local to you. System one, yeah, we can. And I think it's because it's very plug and play. The deck, you just push the weight on the arm, you put the platter on, and it goes. You plug it into the mains, plug it into the amp, speed cable. And it's very, very straightforward to set up. Really, very straightforward. So you don't really need any dealer help with it. Um, so yeah, that's um, like I say, that's system one. Um, yeah, okay. Um, hope you like that. If you've got any questions. Email me rather than leaving in comments because I, I just don't get around to the comments now because they are coming in thick and fast and I can't keep up with that. I try and flip through a few but quite often I find I've missed things from weeks ago. So if you want a, a quick answer, just always always email me. Or you can give me a call at the shop if you like. I'll, put, I'll leave the, the phone number at the end um, and the email address at the end. I just up, literally today just renewed the website so uh, the system one isn't actually on the website at the moment because I've, I've, I've renewed the website and I'm only about 75% of the products are on. Most of the Riga stuff's on but system one isn't so uh, you can still buy it from the shop but just give me a call really. Um, quite difficult to get hold of at the moment but I think I've got stock at the moment but who knows how long that'll, that'll stay there. So okay yeah um, thanks for watching um, sorry I waffled on a bit really. <laughs> Um, like, like I said, I tend not to script this, I just tend to sit down and press, press play and I just start gabbling away, as you can tell. So, yeah, I'll, um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a like. Any questions, give us an email. I'll see you in a future video. Thank you very much.